welcome everybody. We are waiting uh, for all the attendants to join this this webinar. We will wait a few a few seconds, and and then we we start. So welcome to Plastic Circle Insights, an innovative approach to the circularity of plastic in the automotive sector. Uh, we have organized this workshop in order to show you the achievement realized inside Plastic Circle project related to the automotive industry. My name is Ariadna Balada from KIM Barcelona, one of the partners of the project. I have the pleasure to introduce you my project colleagues. Uh, these are my project colleagues, Irene Mora from Plastics Europe, uh, who will explain the context of Plastic Circle, Vito Lambertini from CRF, and Marco Monti from Proplast, who will explain the results they have achieved in automotive applications of recycled plastics. After the presentation, we will have time for questions and answers. We have two ways to do this. Uh, you can raise your hand and we will let you do your question in voice, or you can write it in the question and answers space so I will read it uh, and my colleagues will do the, the explanations. So you can also write on the chat uh, anytime. I hope you enjoy this workshop. And now without further ado, I give the floor to Irene Mora, a sustainability and environment manager from Plastics Europe. Irene? Thank you, Ariadna. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, welcome to everyone to this uh, uh, webinar. I just uh, will make a very short uh, introduction of uh, the project. Uh, I only have uh, five minutes to, to give you an overall uh, view of a four-year project. So uh, first of all, I encourage you to go to our website see, and uh, you can have more details uh, on what a uh, Plastic Circle is about. A uh, Plastic Circle is a European-funded project uh, with a consortium of 20 pan-European uh, partners across the value chains of plastic packaging. Our aim uh, has been to transform waste into valuable products so we can contribute to the European Union efforts to move towards a circular economy. This project has a duration of four years. It started in 2017 and will finish this May. Uh, we have worked together in different phases of the plastic packaging uh, value chains uh, in the collection, transport, sorting, and recycling. As uh, I mentioned, we, the partners, we have 20 partners across uh, Europe, uh, and we can uh, have, uh, you can find research institutes, trade associations, recyclers, waste management companies, a municipality of the three pilot cities, uh, which are uh, Valencia in Spain, Alba Lulia in Romania, and Ultres in, in the Netherlands, uh, plus a follower city in Slovenia, uh, which is Belenje. So we bring together expertise from across the plastic value chains and try our innovations and developments in these pilot cities. Um, uh, as I mentioned, we have been working in four states. Uh, first, we have been working the, in the collection of plastic uh, packaging, and we have developed innovative smart containers to increase the collections rates of plastic packaging waste. We tried all these innovations in the pilot cities, and we worked together with the city instead. Secondly, uh, we have been uh, working also in the transport states of the plastic packaging, uh, creating a cost-effective waste transport system connected with a cloud platform. We have been working in track traceability, eco-driving, route optimizations, and this diff different aspects of this uh, transport system in order to make it more effective. Third, uh, after we have transported this plastic packaging, we have been uh, working in the improvement of the plastic sorting using innovative optical technologies. 
uh, we have been able to sort seven plastic fashion of the plastic uh, packaging, uh, which uh, are have been PET bottles, mono and multi layers PET trays, high density polyethylenes, polypropylenes, both rigid and flexible, low density polyethylene, and plastic mix. And this has been key in order to be able to develop new value add products using recycled plastic products. Uh, we have uh, in the projects uh, uh, several uh, converters and a research institute that help us to uh, incorporate this recycled plastic from post-consumer in different applications in the building and construction sector, in refuse bags, in uh, ground rotations, and in the automotive parts. Uh, what is, uh, this webinar is going to be about, and my colleagues will uh, explain much more this aspect. I encourage you to visit our website. You have a nice video that uh, gives you an over uh, all view of this project. And also, um, I encourage you to follow us on Twitter and uh, LinkedIn. And uh, especially, I encourage you to attend our final events on April 13th, where uh, we will explain you all the development of this four years project. So this is all for my side. I think I make it in five minutes. That was my time maybe a little bit more. So I leave the floor to my colleagues and thank you very much to all of you. Okay, so. Okay, so, oops. So good morning, uh, everybody. So thanks to be here with us uh, and uh, so thanks to Ariana and, and Irene for the introduction. So Marco, uh, are you ready? So we, we will explain uh, uh, the results that we obtained during these four years uh, um, in this uh, quite long journey within, uh, within this project. So the achievement uh, that, we, that we got uh, during, this, uh, during these four years. And uh, so in particular, we will go through the introduction and motivation why the automotive is interested in this type of uh, uh, recycling topics. Then we will see the we will focus on a plastic circle. Uh, remember again the objectives, uh, uh, the compounding phase, and the component validation. And then we will try to conclude and to, to give some uh, future trend and future activities uh, that follow up uh, the plastic circle project. So let's start with the introduction. Uh, so this is uh, the uh, the recipe. So this is the starting point of our study. And uh, uh, in general, uh, a car is, is made uh, of, uh, uh, of uh, several type of material. And uh, uh, we have uh, in, uh, in, uh, in average, uh, in this example, a C segment, uh, like a Jeep Renegade, we have uh, uh, almost uh, 20 kilograms of polymeric material that are divided in thermoplastic, thermosets, and, uh, and elastomer. So this is a big, uh, this is sort of, it's, it's a big uh, quantity of, uh, of material. And, uh, and so we need to face, uh, we need any way to understand how this uh, type of material uh, can, uh, can be, can be in included in all the European policy that we are facing and the use of, uh, of uh, plastics and polymers. And basically we have three main uh, motivation why we need to consider circular economy in, uh, in our vehicle. The first is represented by the directive 2053 so this is a, it's a 20 years old uh, uh, directive uh, uh, that is uh, related to the end of flight vehicles. And this is quite an important uh, uh, point uh, in, uh, for, for the automotive uh, uh, OEMs because uh, uh, by this, uh, in, in this directive, we need to, uh, to assure that the material that are included and that are integrated in our vehicle are recyclable um, for 85% uh, by weight of the overall car and uh, uh, up to 95% reusable. This means that for us, it's really very, very important to have the opportunity to put and to uh, introduce uh, uh, thermoplastic material uh, that, that are considered recyclable and, uh, and also the, um, uh, let's say the engineering in order to be sure that at the end of life, we can reuse some of these parts that are made of this material to be, uh, to be effectively uh, reused. This is the first pillar. Then the second pillar is something that is going on. 
that is related to all the directives and all the uh, all the communication that European Commission is giving us in uh, that, that gave us in the last years. So, so we have already uh, some uh, uh, some directive uh, that was uh, launched in 2019 related to single plastic uh, single use plastics. Then there is a restriction proposal on microplastics uh, that is ongoing. So uh, we are facing this this moment in which uh, we are discussing together with the, with all the uh, car uh, association in Europe, uh, together with the Commission, just to understand which are the targets related to uh, to the automotive uh, to contribute in the circular economy. And then this is for sure something that is is important to follow. And our goal here uh, is to be ready to answer to this uh, to this request uh, developing new materials and new recyclable ma ma new recyclable and recycled material uh, from uh, different uh, from different feedstocks and then the third uh, uh, motivation why we are working in the circular economy is because anyway using a bio-based material using recyclable material the end of life vehicle uh, uh, sorry the, the life cycle assessment anyway is is uh, much favorable using this type of material there are already studies uh, and also we studied this within this project to demonstrate that if we start from a feedstock we clearly avoid the uh, the starting phase of uh, raw material extraction that is very uh, very um, important uh, impact uh, there's a very important impact in this type of material and then these these are the the three main pillars. Now, where we are, if we look again to the to our recipe, the problem is that uh, it's not easy to to answer to the automotive industry. The, the reason is is uh, first uh, first of all is because we have several type of uh, uh, thermoplastic and polymers in our in our vehicle. This is a breakdown between uh, between the different polymer matrices. And this is not the only point. The point is that we have uh, all these matrices uh, are filled with additives and then the and the other fillers that makes uh, that make all all our grades really complex. So you see here just a, a sketch in which you can see two graphs from polypropylene polyamide, and you see that uh, every single dot uh, in in this graph represents a typical grade of material that that is developed specifically for, for a certain application. And then is it clear that the plastic mix in a vehicle is very different? And so it's very difficult to follow this. It's very difficult to meet using a, a different type of fit. So to meet uh, these, uh, uh, these uh, requirements. And then this is uh, really the goal and this is our objective to, uh, to go in a certain direction. So based on this, what, uh, because it's difficult for us to reduce different, uh, th th this type of, uh, of uh, the, the mix uh, range. So it's type of reduce, it's difficult to reduce the, the, um, uh, the number of, uh, of families that we have. Is it clear that we can uh, follow uh, basically three uh, strategies that are listed here? For sure, to answer to the Directive 53, uh, 2053, we need to use recyclable polymers. And then this is uh, always one of our objectives to try to substitute as much as we can uh, thermoset uh, uh, with using thermoplastic and, uh, uh, and also to improve the chain of recycling at the end of life. Then we have uh, also uh, on the on the right side you have the big part of uh, the use of recycled material. Recycled material, recycled polymers for us means uh, for means both matrix uh, and uh, and fillers. So in terms of matrix, clearly today, what we you will see that we have uh, the state of the art is is full of of post industrial uh, post industrial material, and today the, the the big challenge is to go in the post use. In order to be ready in the future to answer all, to all the requests of material that will uh, uh, that will bring for sure to a lack of post-industrial material. On the right side, also fillers are included. So today we are speaking about uh, uh, polymers, but the fillers are, are also important. So there are studies in order to introduce recycled fillers, uh, starting from fibers, from glass fiber, for Campbell fiber, and even some fascinating uh, activities like you can see here in the bottom with the carbon fibers coming from, uh, uh, from uh, lignin uh, waste material. Then also uh, we need to consider uh, also the possibility to use biopolymers and biofillers. This is clearly to answer to the, to the LCA reduction and then uh, to contribute in this, uh, in this reduction of environmental impact of, uh, of our vehicle. Now, what is the state of the art? Where we are today? So this is just uh, a, a, a sketch of what, uh, what is doing 
uh, within, uh, within uh, the FCA, now I should say within uh, Stellantis. And uh, so we have already one, uh, one uh, standard that is uh, dedicated to polypropylene. Polypropylene, have uh, you seen that is the, the, the majorly used material. So we need to attack for sure uh, polypropylene as a first. And we have already a set of, uh, of different type and di of different materials that are uh, available in our standard for a limited number of uh, application today. So we can we have uh, material for air duct, for underbody shield, for lockeries. And uh, so the, and this, this type of components represent a certain amount, for sure not negligible in, uh, in, in our vehicle, but clearly we need to improve, we need to increase the use of recycled material. And then uh, uh, what, what the, the, the lack, the, the, the bad points, so the thing that we need to improve are listed here. So always we ask uh, uh, stable uh, performances. We need to increase the efficiency in recycling because we are seeing that uh, in a certain way, the cost is not like we expected uh, at the beginning, the cost start to be to increase also for this material. And then we need for sure to make the efficiency, the, the more efficient the recycling phase. We need also to, uh, to be sure that these materials are at the same quality level of the current one. So new test procedure and, and new material standards in order to be uh, able to, um, to, to map and to follow the development and to guide also our supply chain to produce this, uh, this material. And very important is the uh, design by circular economy. So we need to design in a, better, in a better way components in order to be ready to accept this material and to be ready also in the future to be easily, more easily dismantleable at the end, at the end of life. Clearly, this is for the polypropylene. And uh, uh, also for PET, it's important to mention PET. You will see a lot of PET in, uh, in this presentation. PET from, uh, uh, from uh, uh, post-industrial, from post-consumer is already applied in our vehicle. It's not used for bulk uh, application. Uh, but uh, is used for, uh, uh, for uh, uh, carpeting and for textile and uh, for, uh, uh, for, uh, for, for, in general, for, for fibers uh, use. And you see here some application that is already ongoing in the Stellantis uh, Europe activities. And so you see that carpets uh, are made uh, of several vehicles are made uh, using textile from bottles, uh, as well as the rear part of the Jeep Renegade is, is done with, uh, with PET bottles. And uh, last year, beginning of 2020, we launched also the uh, 500 hybrid, Panda hybrid, and middle of and the end of the year, the 500 electric that are uh, in which we are installing PET from uh, uh, recycled from, uh, from the sea. So the PET uh, activities are, are ongoing on textile you will see that uh, we have a lack uh, on uh, the application of this type of material into bulk, uh, into bulk uh, components. And then let's come into the, uh, into the plastic circle objective. So based on this introduction, uh, what, we, what, what we wanted to do in, in, in this project, we want to answer to some of the, of the, uh, of the challenges that, that, we, that we presented. So we, we need for sure to adapt the properties of sorted material, in particular for PET and polypropylene, from, uh, uh, from uh, packaging to bulk parts for automotive. And so this is, uh, let's say, the general, uh, the really general objective. Then if you go in, in some other objectives that are related clearly to the research and the, the research and development project like, like Plastic Circle, that we need to, we wanted to compound 100% of polymer matrix, so polypropylene and PET, 100% uh, from recycled feedstock, so 100% of polymer, repeat polymer matrix, not for, for the fibers and for additives. Then our target was to, to produce two parts in this, uh, in this project to demonstrate one part for polypropylene and one for PET that can really be general for application in, uh, in interiors, in exteriors, in the engine compartment. Uh, so basically to cover uh, the different parts of the vehicle. And then clearly the objective of, of, of Plastic Circle was to have a, a, a sort of preliminary validation of this product to reach uh, TRL, uh, TRL5. In the compounding phase, so what we gave as an exercise to the team, uh, to the Plastic Circle team, uh, we selected together with ProPlast uh, a certain uh, type of grade, a certain type of material that in principle they could be copied, let's say copied, uh, using uh, um, post-consumer PET and polypropylene. And so you see this is the list of, uh, of material that we identified with some uh, potential applications. So you see that we identified uh, PA66 glass fiber that today is not recycled in our vehicle or we don't have any 
any um, any standard for a cycle for, for a cycle we we have also pbt that is uh, uh, that is again not recyclable even if the application of pbt is is, is clearly lower than than polyamide and then a section of uh, of uh, of different uh, polypropylene clearly we target a polypropylene at this stage uh, not really difficult in terms of uh, aesthetics in terms of uh, really high high demand in terms of aesthetics so we decide to have a semi-structural part and so we decided P, uh, talc 10 the mix uh, glass fiber talc 15 that today are uh, again not recyclable and then we also select uh, two uh, different uh, um, uh, two different product that today are in uh, in in our standard uh, of recycled polypropylene to understand if uh, if we can from post industrial camp uh, pass to post consumer having the same uh, the same results and then we gave this exercise to um, uh, to proplast that start to produce uh, uh, this uh, this material and so for this i will leave the word to uh, to marco monti uh, to explain how they reach these results thanks vito can you hear me now right yes, yes. okay basically our activities start from receiving the requirements table that you can see as an example on the left side of this slide uh, in this requirement table we 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 could find all the uh, target, technical target that we have to reach with the materials we were going to, to produce. Well, uh, as already, was already mentioned by Vito, uh, for polypropylene, poly, 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 the first step was the selection of the cycle raw material, so the feedstock for, uh, for producing this compound. As for polypropylene, poly, poly, it's not a problem. It was not an issue because uh, we are almost uh, aware that uh, uh, polypropylene is widely used also in, uh, in the plastic packaging. So was a, a clear association between polypropylene from uh, post-consumer plastic packaging and uh, polypropylene to be used for producing compounds for the automotive application we have seen. As for polyamide, we, are, uh, we know that the polyamide is almost not used in, uh, uh, in uh, plastic packaging. And uh, so we, we had the, the, the issue in finding a solution uh, for uh, for uh, replace this polyamide with another polymer. And now, as again was already mentioned, that we use uh, we get bumped into uh, PT PT from bottles. PT mean because it's widely used in uh, in, uh, in plastic packaging, as we all know. And, uh, and well, this project started in 2017, and that time. The, the main source for uh, PT from a plastic packaging was the, the bottle. In particular, in Italy, we uh, collect uh, separately uh, colored, uh, multicolored bottle, uh, bottles, which has uh, uh, less application in uh, uh, food packaging, uh, food packaging in general uh, as a recycled material. Uh, in that case, so our study started from this kind of, uh, of materials. Later on, during the, uh, the project, we know that the recycling topic is, uh, is really changing very fast. And uh, during the project, uh, more application with the bottle grade were, uh, were found on, uh, again, in a closer loop application, so in, a, in the plastic packaging. And uh, there, therefore, we focus more on the uh, possibility using trays post-consumer trays, which so far has not much as much application as the bottle grains. So this is, these, are, these were more or less the feedstock that we have selected. Next slide, please. And, uh, and then we start preparing the compound and the, the formulations. And uh, we, we made several trial and error uh, exercises. And uh, at the end, we find uh, several top formulation for each application that was uh, already mentioned by Vito. So polypropylene talc 10, 10% 10, 10 of talc, 20% of talc, 30% of talc, and the, the one with the 50% glass fiber, 50% talc. As you can see, for the least demanding, uh, technical demanding application, which means 20% uh, talc and 30% talc, we uh, uh, perfectly comply with the technical requirements, as you can see from the tables. Uh, while we have, uh, some issue in getting the, uh, to the target for the polypropylene filler with 10% talc because it's a very highly demanding application from the technical point of view. And, uh, and then we work uh, also well with the uh, polypropylene filler with glass fiber and talc. Next, please. 
In the case of uh, uh, PET, PET, well, it's a, it's, it's a different material from polyamide and PBT, which is, we all know maybe that it's not so easy to, to use for injection molding. So we work, uh, we work hard to uh, make this material suitable for injection molding for producing the, 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 the final components. And also we work also for in impact properties, which is uh, uh, an issue again for PT with respect to the poly uh, polyamide, polyamide C6. Uh, and, uh, and then uh, this, um, keep in mind that we select PT because of the thermal property, thermal resistance. So uh, uh, this was a, a very important characteristic that we uh, work on. But at the end, we didn't succeed in getting perfectly to the final results. As you can see, we are not the same HDT or the same uh, impact resistance, but, as, but the results were evaluated by CRF as very interesting anyway for the, for the final application that we have, uh, that we have in mind. So uh, both the application were, were, were good. And then, as you can see, we find uh, just one formulation that was uh, good both for PA66 and PBT. So this was another very interesting result because, because in terms of uh, impact on the scalability to the industrial level, we have a, a same recycled rate which can be used in uh, several, uh, several different applications. Next slide, please. And then last year, we finally uh, got uh, uh, to, to find uh, a, a, a good uh, bottle uh, tray uh, source uh, for PET. And we try to use this source also for producing the same compound as we have done before. So in the black line, the first line, you, will, you can see the, uh, the, our compound, the bottle grade PET. And then you, will, you can see the tray grade PET with a 20% left fiber, which was the, the formulation that, uh, that we have produced. As you can see, the performance, even though it's a, a bit lower from the impact strength point of view, uh, demonstrate that this source can be very valuable for substituting, for replacing uh, the bottle grade in several uh, injection molding applications. This was very interesting because uh, so far there, is, there are a lot of applications for bottle grade PT, but not as many application for three PT. So this was a very interesting result. So we use also this material for the final, final demonstration. Next slide, please. Okay, so as a final step, we have a meeting with CRF. We decided, they decided with our support, which were the more interesting uh, application in terms of impact of the materials uh, to be used in the automobile sector. And uh, this, was, this was the uh, polypropylene with 15% glass fiber, 15% talc, and the, the formulation, the PT formulation, both from bottles from trays. But PT from bottles because they allow us to get the, the best performance, uh, the best performance, and the PT trays because of the impact, because of the reason I mentioned just a few seconds ago. So we prepare these materials and we send it to, uh, to CRF. Vito, next slide, I guess, now it's your turn. Okay, okay. So, so based okay. on this, uh, based on this uh, formulation, uh, together with Proplast, uh, because we were injecting, uh, let's say, with our mold, uh, with our molds uh, and, uh, and, their, uh, um, and their also injection molding machine. So we uh, decide to produce, uh, uh, as I said at the beginning, two demonstrators. So the first one is, uh, is a demonstrator that is, uh, uh, is a central console uh, uh, structure that is uh, uh, typically in a, in a polypropylene reinforced uh, in, a, in a certain way. Uh, and so we decided to try this, uh, this material using the polypropylene uh, uh, glass fiber and talc uh, uh, mix 15%. Uh, and uh, uh, the second one uh, was uh, uh, a demo that is, uh, we call it the general uh, bracket example. Uh, that is uh, today can be really realized. Uh, there are plenty of, of these brackets in, uh, in our vehicle to support cabling, uh, to support other parts. Uh, and, uh, and a lot of, a lot of these are made in, uh, in polyamide, uh, with, even with high uh, grade of, uh, of uh, high, high level, high, high content of, of fillers. Some of these are made in metals. Uh, uh, some of these are made in, uh, in, uh, with, uh, with a lower amount of, of glass fiber. And then uh, clearly we, uh, we select uh, for these two applications, uh, two molds. The first one is 
the production mold that today is, uh, is in application on, on our uh, 500 electric. And uh, uh, the second one is, uh, is a mold that was existing with a bracket for, uh, for, um, industrial, uh, for, for industrial vehicle and that was used as an as example of, uh, of this uh, of, of, of demonstration of PT compliance respect to polyamide. And so this is the first. The first uh, sample, so you see that is the, is the green uh, part on this uh, assembly. So this is the, the central console of our 500 electric. And so we use the production, uh, the production, uh, um, the production machine uh, to produce the part. And uh, uh, so you will see that uh, this is really a complex, uh, a complex part that is, uh, uh, that is, um, uh, say was a really a good exercise uh, to demonstrate the recycling, uh, uh, the recycling capabilities. And uh, um, we clearly, we use the, the material produced by, by Proplast to produce a set of, uh, of uh, this uh, sample, and uh, clearly uh, we start to do, a, uh, let's say, really a preliminary validation to check if this material is compliant with the uh, with the material uh, with the material test that usually we are doing in uh, in our labs. And so we select a list of uh, of tests that uh, uh, that we performed in uh, in, uh, in our lab that are including that include uh, the heat aging, the humidity aging, the thermal cycling, so the analysis of uh, gap and flash uh, uh, before and after and after these uh, uh, cycles in order to understand if there is some weakness, if there is some uh, uh, problems in terms of the formation uh, and uh, and uh, weakness uh, in, in tightening these the, the different material together with this uh, with our component. And then uh, also um, we um, also do the, the the load box opening that is not fully com fully related to the to the part that, that that we that we produce, but there is a part that is in contact with this uh, with this box. And then also the cold impact in some place where uh, where we have in in, in behind the, the our component. And so we you see on the right side uh, example of, of the final assembly. Uh, of, of our uh, of our uh, component, and so you all the all the the the, the, the numbers and figures that demonstrate uh, the, the different gap and flash that uh, that we have, and so basically what we can say at this uh, this level uh, of of profit is we can say that the, the, the TRL five is is reached. So we uh, analyze the component uh, in uh, in a real environment uh, in a real uh, assembly, and then this could be for us a, a, a starting point for for the future step of, of exploitation. Then the second, uh, the second uh, application is uh, these uh, brackets you see in, on the left side, the drawing, uh, so the cut design. And uh, on the right side, you see all the different material uh, mentioned before by, by Marco that are uh, in comparison with the current PA66 glass fiber. Uh, that is uh, represented here, and then we copy this uh, we, with the two formulation, the free formulation that, that uh, uh, Proplast optimized. So the first uh, from uh, from bottles, so the second one from uh, from trays, from benchmarking, and the last one is the uh, the uh, PET from trays uh, coming from the value chain uh, that Irene showed at the beginning, uh, starting from the the, the collection. Uh, uh, the transport and uh, sorting uh, optimization uh, within uh, within plastic circle and then clearly now we are at the last uh, two months of the project so uh, we uh, received and we are performing uh, all the tests on uh, on the on all this material again at the same uh, uh, at the same in the same time also comparing this with some benchmarking material that are not uh, uh, listed here uh, what uh, I can show today is uh, the, the, the activity that we perform on the first uh, um, or the first compound that we uh, received uh, uh, end of uh, 2020 uh, from Plastic Circle. You see here the material, the, the, the component uh, blocked and uh, and uh, in the same uh, operating condition with the tensile test in this in this position, and we did. Uh, the uh, this uh, the, the test on this material before and after uh, static uh, static thermal cycle and basically you, you cannot appreciate from the uh, from the from the different curves the the let's say different mechanical uh, consistent mechanical properties uh, before and after thermal cycle so basically we can conclude also in this case really let's say really in a provisional way in preliminary way that that we have a similar behavior 
from uh, uh, cycle PET and uh, virgin polyamide. Clearly, at the next meeting, the 13th of April, I plan to show also the full picture. So all putting all together all the results, also including trace and including some benchmarking material from a, a post use uh, application. So in conclusion, so you see that uh, that we optimized uh, the the formulation. So we have uh, um, we we we. We, we, we are able to, to inject different type of polypropylene, different type of PET. And so this is, uh, in general, a good results for, uh, for a research project. Uh, then, technically speaking, we, uh, we produce these compounds uh, basically on 100% of polymer matrix uh, based on recycled material. And this was really, let's say, sort of difficult task that we gave to, to, to the consortium. And uh, it is something that uh, we can discuss uh, uh, time by time with our value chain if this can content uh, this content can be reduced in order to get better properties in order to meet uh, better maybe other other type of uh, of uh, of uh, poly polymers that, that, that we are using. With these two material, we produce these two demos, the central console in polypropylene and the bracket in PET. And basically what we can say, we can say in general that the TRL5 is, uh, uh, is reached for, uh, for both of these. And clearly this, all this material then require to go up in the TRL. That means that this uh, um, material have to, be, uh, have to be included in, in our value chain, have to be industrialized, have to be optimized and to do all the quality control to, uh, for, the, for the component. And then clearly, when we reach a TRL 8 and 9, we need to do the full validation of component, including all the different qualification tests that, uh, that we need to do, not only at the material level, but also at, at component level. And then also, uh, thanks to this project, uh, we were able to, uh, to do benchmarking uh, and um, so we were able to produce to, to, to do the benchmarking from both sides, from, from feedstock and uh, uh, from feedstock sides, and also in, in trying to understand and to start to introduce post-consumer recycling also in, in automotive. And so this is the, the step that will continue in which, in which way. Again, uh, we uh, start uh, um, in 2020 a big, uh, a big activity that is uh, for us very uh, important. It's propedeutic for the exploitation of this project. So the idea is to, is to again to start from our uh, from our uh, list of material uh, that are in our vehicle. So you see here that we selected uh, a set of uh, a very uh, long list of uh, of different type of polypropylene then then that, that can be uh, can be uh, produced using uh, using recycled material and uh, in in this uh, in all these uh, numbers there are the, clearly the four material that we developed uh, within within plastic circle and so that the idea is uh, exactly to do this to to uh, try to ex uh, to ex uh, to transfer the results of this project to uh, our value chain and uh, in order to understand if this uh, uh, these results of this project can in uh, some way help in uh, in uh, speeding up the the introduction of this material then clearly in this study, we also wanted to include polyamide and PCABS that are not in, uh, in discussion uh, uh, here. So in basically we are uh, trying to substitute some, uh, uh, so the, the, the first of, the, of, of, the, of this list. Um, and, uh, and so this is also something that we is in discussion with uh, uh, some of the, some partners in the, in the Stellantis value chain. And so what, uh, what we have in mind, so we need to, we want to transfer this to our, uh, to our value chain. The goal is clear. So the goal is uh, to have uh, uh, to have uh, available polypropylene and uh, polyamide and PCBS compound uh, available for uh, for next uh, next vehicle. Clearly, we we already interviewed all our uh, all our value chain uh, providers, and uh, so we came out with uh, with more than 170 uh, grades of material that are identified that can can in principle substitute the uh, these uh, all these grades. And clearly now we are in the phase of uh, full characterization to do the standard implementation in order to be ready and to be uh, to have available at the end of 2021 to have available a long list of, uh, of material uh, using uh, recycled content. And it is clear that most of these material are based on post-industrial 
and then uh, this is the first step. And the goal is to transfer, and also thanks to the results of Plastic Cycle, to transfer some of the concepts that we understood uh, in terms of compounding, in terms of injection, uh, in terms of feedstock available, also to parts, part of the value chain in order to uh, transfer and to be also to have also available post uh, consumer uh, products in the in the near future. And so with this, uh, I conclude and uh, so thanks for your attention and I think that now we can uh, open the, the discussion. Yes, Vito, we have one question. If you can go to the slide about uh, PET feedstocks, please. There is a method to go directly, but I don't, I don't remember this. So PET feedstock are here. Is it correct? Uh, Yes, I think uh, the question is if E and HDT are properties related to shift to stiffness, why don't they achieve the target in the same level when using recycled feedstock? Is there any reason? I don't know if it's this. Ma, uh, Marco, can you, can you answer it? I actually didn't get the question properly, maybe. So, yes, it's in the questions and answers space. Yeah, no, uh, I can repeat this. Yeah, thanks. Is, uh, if E and HDT are properties related to stiffness, why don't they achieve the target in the same level when using recycled feedstock? Is there any reason? Well, uh, if, if I correct, if I understood well, uh, but well, we are changing polymers. So the, the, the virgin material is polyamide, the recycled polymer is PET. The, uh, the HDT, this means the, the, resi the thermal resistance to deformation. So it's a kind of uh, mechanical, thermal mechanical uh, value is uh, uh, really related to the crystallinity of the polymers. And uh, we know that PET don't like a lot to be to get crystallized during injection molding. So our our um, goal was to formulate properly the material in a way that we can crystallize it in the mold because mo mostly depend on that. So uh, maybe we can uh, even further improve the crystallization process and properties of, of the uh, of the PET for obtaining uh, an even higher uh, um, HDT, so thermal resistance, let's say. But there are two different polymers, so that's why we didn't get, I mean, we selected the PET because we, for poly, with polypropylene, we cannot reach that, that value at all, because uh, polypropylene melt at 160, so we, we cannot even uh, think about uh, using it. That's why we turn on PET. I don't know if I answer properly to the, to the question. Yes, we have uh, some more questions. If someone wants to to do the question in voice, uh, you you don't only have to raise your hand, and I will open your your microphones. And Jonathan Weston is asking why sourcing PP from packaging and not targeting PP from ELV ASR recovery. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, this, is a, this is a very, very easy question to answer because plastic circle will uh, uh, push us to use material from the plastic packaging. That's why we use that. And uh, Vito, maybe you can add oh, something. Yes. No, clearly this is this is uh, is correct. So within uh, we we, uh, we must consider both. So we are really, really also really a lot interested in uh, in uh, in PP from uh, uh, from end of life. So we have also collaboration in other projects. Uh, in order to optimize also this uh, this stream so at the moment uh, at the moment uh, um, at the moment uh, we don't have uh, um, so many so many grades available uh, from the end of life but it's something that is really uh, absolutely very very interesting for us and uh, uh, we are collaborating within uh, within uh, another project that i can mention that is a life called uh, plus plus in which we are working with Comet in Belgium, and they have a really nice uh, post shredding uh, post shredding um, activity that uh, that was uh, uh, that was uh, in place, and then uh, and then so it's for sure something something uh, interesting in this type of project in this in plastic circle. The idea was to understand if 
from packaging, we can do something. We have uh, two more, some more uh, questions. Uh, two are related. What about emissions and other requests? Are they asked at the same level as virgin material based compounds? Or could they be a bit sacrificed? And the other one is regarding RPP. Did you monitor other volatile, volatile aesthetics for interior parts? Uh, so for the first uh, question, what I can say is unfortunately not. We can uh, we cannot sacrifice any any uh, of um, say any, any emission. So we are uh, we are introducing. Uh, uh, we are introducing, uh, so we introduce the VOC analysis in in our interiors, and we are putting limits uh, uh, that will be that will be for sure in place uh, uh, in the next future. We are monitoring uh, this, and so basically, this is something that we we, we cannot uh, we cannot discount on uh, on uh, on this. Uh, clearly, this is uh, something that uh, we need to take into consideration, and so this is the analysis that we have to do. And uh, uh, is it clear that in case of uh, uh, in case of emission, we need to clearly to optimize the application of this type of material? So, well, I would say I, I would add with uh, that the materials we reproduce uh, didn't suffer from uh, other point of view. I mean, uh, the, all the demonstrators or the um, compounds uh, didn't smell uh, badly. I would say. Yes. Not, not for sure the PT source, um, but even uh, the polypropylene was, uh, was, in this case, the, the issue, the order was not an issue. Yes. Okay. And in terms of the second, you were speaking also about, uh, about aesthetics. Uh, uh, clearly, aesthetics at the moment uh, is a critical point. It's a critical point. Uh, uh, because usually uh, for aesthetic parts, you need to, uh, to have uh, uh, you, you, need to, you really need to get the, the, the right color, uh, the right chromatic coordinates, even for black uh, parts, uh, you need a certain black. And then uh, um, any, any, also any small defects uh, on the surface, uh, clearly this can, can, be, can be covered by graining uh, and so on. But usually for aesthetical parts, uh, even post-industrial recycled material, are a little bit more difficult. And then is it clear that if we start from packaging, we decide to start not for, from, from, for aesthetics. But you can imagine, you can ju just a general comment on this. So basically the, the, the question is, do we need really to go uh, to attack uh, aesthetic parts in our vehicle? Most probably not. Within the 200 kilograms, we need 120 kilograms of plastic. We can say that we have a lot of kilograms of material that are not aesthetic. And so clearly the target will be the, the technical target that we have. We will, uh, we will be, we must be able not to recycle, to have 100% of recycled material in our vehicle. So we can, if we say something related to the numbers that the figures that that, that uh, other OEMs declared in terms of uh, percentage, we can say 20%, uh, 25, 30% of plastic uh, uh, and uh, uh, or in kilograms, it means that we will need from 15 to 20, 30 kilograms of material recycled. So we can really first, we can really attack everything that is not visible and uh, maybe it's in the engine compartment, so no, no problem in the exterior, so no problem of water and, and so on. Then clearly next step, is to uh, go also in these more difficult targets. Okay, so we have another question. Uh, did the pay tray feedstock in your study include multi-layer pet trays or only mon monolayer pet trays? This is a good question uh, uh, I can answer, uh, but the, the, the answer may, be, <laughs> may disappoint. Uh, the, 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 people, the person who made the question. Uh, uh, basically, uh, we know that we, we don't, maybe it is, I mean, we are not so, we are not so sure because uh, it's a very experimental, uh, it's much more experimental materials. We know that it is only PET because we perform analysis, uh, thermal analysis on this material. So we know that, that this is just PET. And, uh, but maybe it could be also a multi mono material, multi layer structure of PET. This is, this is is uh, we are not fully aware. We are, not, of course, we are speaking with the the, 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 the supplier, and we are working with them uh, for understanding better which can be 
uh, which, which is the limit of the selection that we can um, uh, put as a limit uh, for having a material which uh, with, with, with the good performance that we, that we got. And a few more questions. Uh, visual interior and exterior parts are already including, including recycling, recycled grades, including bumper fascias. This was a common. Uh, yes, this is true. Not uh, not in the ex uh, FCA uh, production in uh, in Europe and the worldwide. So this is not uh, applied today. Is it true that you can include a certain percentage of uh, of recycling in these uh, difficult in the, this, these difficult uh, uh, components? But at the moment uh, we are uh, we are anyway uh, painting this uh, this part. So we are not using uh, we are not using fully recycled material. So what we can say is that in this application, we can regrind material. So we have in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the loop of production of component, a certain percentage is allowed uh, of regrinded material. But, but if you ask to our value chain at the moment, if you ask for a, a product for, for bumper containing a recycled grade, no one is able to, to, to reach this target. Okay, so we have a few more questions uh, until now. Any reason why only PET and PP, uh, PET and PP are used for recycling and making of new products? Uh, this is a, if, if the question is on, on packaging, I, I sincerely, I don't, I don't know. Um, I don't know. I cannot. I I, I don't know the, the reason why uh, PT and PP are, are the, the the main use material. I suppose for uh, because for packaging they are the, the most uh, uh, let's say the most performing uh, in terms of uh, in terms of uh, protecting uh, what, uh, what what the packaging is is for. But I I, I don't know in details uh, why these material are the most used. I don't know, Marco, if you have some comments. Yeah. Well, basically, I, I don't, I don't know. I, I did a, a different uh, uh, read of the, of the question. Okay. Uh, if the question is uh, why we use PT and polypropylene from uh, plastic packing to automotive application, the answer is that the, the third material which is used for a packaging is uh, polyethylene, which is not, you have most not used in uh, automotive sector or because of the lack of the thermal and mechanical properties. So. Uh, th that's why we, we didn't select polyethylene. If it's, this was a question, yes, yes. If it is like this, it's okay. So I can confirm that in this case, polyethylene is used, and today, but it's used for uh, a critical application uh, that is that are mainly in the fuel uh, in the fuel lines and the fuel tank. So uh, in this case, uh, this is, for instance, one example of regrinding internal regrinding. So we are already using forty percent. Of all our in all our uh, fuel tank are produced using a reg internal regrinded uh, polyethylene. That is that is anyway that is a post-industrial. It's really high quality material. Is the same material like like the virgin one. And so we are using this material. And so we can get forty percent in only the exter external layer of the of the tank. But it's impossible at the moment to uh, to thing to use polyethylene for uh, for this application from packaging, I mean. Okay, so more questions until the end of the webinar. For the most demanding specifications for door panels, dashboard, dashboards, bumpers, did you consider chemically recycled PP? We are in, in discussion, yes, with the part of the value chain to do it, yes. This was not a topic of this, uh, of this uh, of this project clearly the project here is to optimize let's say the other cycle uh, of, of respect to the chemical uh, chemical recycling and so in this case uh, we are trying to uh, really to optimize the uh, the collection transport sorting uh, and so the quality control of the all the uh, mechanical recycling value chain uh, on the other side is it clear that the chemical recycling can offer uh, can offer um, can offer the possibility to have uh, very high quality material and maybe less uh, issues in the recycling uh, in the recycling uh, phase. Uh, is it clear that uh, is it clear that there is a trade-off? Okay, properties are very good, 
and so uh, we are sure about properties because basically it's a feedstock and so we cannot uh, we, the, the difference is uh, is uh, zero respect to the virgin material and petroleum based material on the other side uh, uh, let's say the cost of uh, of this material at this stage are a, a little bit too high uh, to be supported by to be to be afforded by by the automotive sector but anyway i confirm that uh, several OE, several material providers are going in in this direction and so we hope that soon uh, this material will be available at a reasonable cost let's say and another question related to the the prices which is one of the big deals in the project what about raw material prices? General view is recycled materials must be cheaper, but because of all, all the recycled process, they are indeed more expensive. Yes. Uh, is the market prepared to pay higher price for recycled materials? No, the answer is, the answer should be no, because we are not ready to, to pay more. Uh, but if you consider, if you consider, uh, if you consider, the, the the constraint that we have so if you look at the at the um, let's say at the constraint that we have is it clear that if we will receive certain if we will receive a certain uh, certain type of uh, of uh, uh, of uh, of requirement uh, uh, from uh, from regulation so from the homologation like it was in in 2020 when, when uh, 2000 sorry when the directive 53 came out is it clear that at that, at that stage uh, we uh, we had to spend uh, we now have to monitor all the value chain of the end of life so this is a cost and we need to afford this anyway if we have some directive to homologate uh, and to uh, be able to sell a car is it clear that we need to do it on the other side if you look at the third uh, also the third impact uh, is it clear that in some case even if the cost is higher uh, like in the PET, uh, in PET example uh, that I show relative to textile. Anyway, uh, let's say the demand of sustainability, the demand of circularity is so high from, uh, from the customer point of view that uh, uh, let's say everyone is, uh, is uh, in the good place to pay for, uh, for this. The trend is anyway, is a little bit different respect to the past. In the past, uh, uh, the recycled material considered very low quality, no one uh, wanted to use them. And so the cost was very low, very, let's say, was lower than, than the counterpart. Today, the demand is higher. And then uh, because it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, from an economical point of view, uh, the price is increased. And so at the end, also post-industrial material with the high content, with the, with the, let's say, not so high content of recycled material to meet the specification, the cost is uh, not so uh, uh, not so advantageous respect to uh, to the counterpart, and uh, um, and so this trend will be will uh, it seems that it will be will be will be kept in this. So this is an anyway an obstacle in uh, a great obstacle in the application of this material. Okay, and a la, um, um, last comment, uh, so, because we will have to close the webinar. We are able to reach the requirements for PP bumper with recycled grades. We are removing the paint from PP bumpers and compounding to prime specification. Okay, so you have uh, all our contacts, so please give me, give me details on this and I'm interested in to understand, yes. Because we cannot see the name because it just we, uh, it's anonymous, so we... No. <laughs> okay, but you, you have the contact, the contact name, so it's, it's interesting. So we are open to discuss and to see if these requirements are, are in place. And uh, you know that today we are also in a big merge with, uh, with the XPSA colleagues. And so this discussion is, uh, uh, is done uh, um, every, every week with them because they are in a, in a different, uh, uh, slightly different position. They are for sure in advance uh, respect to what FCA was, was doing. And then it's a cost and discussion. So maybe uh, this material are already applied from, uh, from uh, other OEMs. So we are interested to understand. Okay, so it's, uh, there are, it's Jonathan Weston from NBA okay. Polymers Limited. Okay, thank you. So we can stay in contact for sure. Okay, uh, so we have it's time to to close the webinar. Um, Irene will do a, a last. Uh,
a last comment about this? Well, uh, just very fast to, to be of time. I thank all the colleagues for very interesting presenta presentation. Uh, it has been demonstrated that one more cooperation is key to foster circularity of plastics. And uh, I invite you all of you to, um, to participate in the final event of this uh, plastic circle, uh, where all these results and in the results in the other part of the project will be present. And uh, we just to say that uh, once more having demonstrated that uh, plastic uh, waste is too valuable to waste. So thank you very much uh, to everyone. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed this uh, event and hopefully see you all on, on the 13th of April. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for, for your attendance.